Hello everyone, it's Benny, and in this video, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be starting a series on C++, and I know that's a little bit different from what I usually do, but it's going to lead into a series that I think a lot of people will be interested in, so that's sort of why I'm choosing to do this now. And I'm not actually going to start the primary series in this video, so I'm not going to actually start out with Hello World, this is how you set up a C++ compiler, an IDE, and a whole bunch of stuff like that, so if you're interested in that, wait for the next video, that's all coming then. In this video, I just want to sort of introduce the language, and give you an idea of what it's all about, look at some actual C++ code so you can get a feel of how it looks like, even though you're not going to understand any of it, most likely. But yeah, you'll get at least yeah, you'll get some idea of how it looks like and how it works and such. And yeah, so with that all out of the way, let's go ahead and let's get started. So what exactly is C++? Well, C++ actually starts with this other language called C. Nothing after it, nothing in front of it, nothing special about it, just plain C, like the letter C. And C is a very, very old language. It started back in 1973. So as of this year, it's going to be 40 years old. Yeah, very old programming language. But C was a very, very important milestone language because C did a lot of things right. It made programming fairly simple compared to a lot of languages back then. It was pretty easy to understand overall. It wasn't overly massive, so it could be implemented on new hardware pretty easily and also ended up being fairly well standardized, so it was very easy to get C code running on a large variety of platforms. So C, very important language, did a whole bunch of things right, and it's still one of the most popular languages to this day. But there was this guy, Björn Straustrup, and he had this issue of C, because although C was very simple, it kept things simple enough that it was very easy to use, and it didn't sacrifice a lot of power, but still made programming easy. The problem was it, it still left out some things that could be useful. It was limiting in a few senses. And Bjorn didn't like that. And some of those limitations made C kind of painful to work with. So he made this extension, C++. And it was originally designed to just add classes to C. So if you've worked in Java before or something, you know what classes are. You know all that stuff. But it went on to add this huge slew of features to C, and it ended up becoming this new language called C++. For the most part, valid C code is C++ code, with very few exceptions, like if you named a variable something that's now a C++ keyword, good luck getting that to run. <laughs> Your best bet is just changing the name of the variable, but yeah. There are a few tiny nuances, but for the most part they're compatible languages. And C++ just took everything C had and added more. So, and that's what makes C++ one of the most powerful languages out there. You can do pretty much anything in C++, and it doesn't lock you into anything. If you pick up Java, for example, and I'm going to be harping on Java a lot, because that's sort of the other language I've done a lot of videos with. But if you put up Java, the uh, very first thing you have to do is you have to create classes. You're forced into the object-oriented paradigm. You're forced to writing object-oriented style code. And... There's not much you can do about that, it's just the nature of the language. C++ is much more freeform. You can write pretty much any style of code you want in C++. If you say, I don't like object-oriented code, I want to write procedural code, you can do that. If you want to write functional code, you can do that. It's very... it doesn't enforce any coding style on you. You can do basically anything you want in C++, and that definitely reflects in some of the decisions of the languages. The language. The language, not the languages. And yeah, so, very freeform. It's also incredibly powerful language. It allows you, since it does feature things like object orientation, you have all the features of object oriented code. So, you don't have to worry about, oh yeah, you get all the advantages of that, I'll put it that way. I don't want to get into the huge spiel about what makes object oriented code good and pros and cons of that, so I'll save that for another video. But yeah, it has all the features of object oriented code, so very powerful features there. And... Another interesting feature about C++, and perhaps one of the most important features of all, it's designed in such a way that it can very, very easily be converted into machine code. So, in other words, code that your processor can actually execute. And that's 
very important for the language because it means it can be used for very, very high performance applications. If you're writing high performance applications, C++ can almost become a language of choice. You can write, if you know what you're doing, <laughs> that's a big if right there, if you know what you're doing, you can write some very, very high performance code in C++. Now, if you don't know what you're doing, that's a whole other story, but yeah. So yeah, very powerful language. Another very key feature of C++. It lets you have both very low-level access to the hardware. You can individually manipulate bits of binary data if you want to in C++, while still giving you access to very high-level features. So you could write very human-readable code, and you can also write very machine-language-like code. Again, reflecting the sort of freeform style of C++. If you can code basically however you see fit for the situation. And yeah. <laughs> and one thing I do want to bring up is C++ reads line by line. It doesn't seem very important right now necessarily, but it's it's going to be a very important feature because it's just sort of the way the language is designed to be interpreted. And that affects a lot of design decisions. You see a lot of things be like, huh, that's really weird. Why did it decide to do it that way? Line by line feature. And again, that goes in the whole theme of make sure it can be very easily converted into the machine code. So yeah, that's basically C++ in a nutshell. That's, <laughs> yeah. And there's a lot more I could go into it, but I'll go ahead and save that for the next video where I actually start getting into it. Because you can actually start getting into this very, yeah, powerful language. So, to start off with, I have some actual C++ code for you. <laughs> yeah. E excellent speaking right there. Yeah, I have some actual C++ code for you right here. And I don't expect you to really understand it at all. I mean... Unless you're already a coding guru, in which case you probably recognize a few of these things, at the very least. Anyways, the program. This program right here, in the theme of compilation and all that such, is, in a sense, a compiler. What it does is it takes a program written in another programming language called assembly. And actually, I'll bring up the program I'm going to compile right here. So, here it is. It's a program written in assembly. And it's going to take all this code, and it's going to compile it. It's not going to target the processor that my computer is running. It's going to be targeting a processor instruction set called Circus 16. But it's going to compile it, and then it's going to save that file, and it's going to run it. It's going to take this. Yeah, it's going to take the code, and it's going to execute it. So, and we'll get to sort of see the result of it. So, what this assembly code does, just so you know what we're expecting, it calculates the Fibonacci sequence up to this term five. Plus two, so this should calculate the seventh term of the Fibonacci sequence. At least if I commented this code right, because I'm not re really reading the code right now. But yeah, let's go ahead and run it. So just run, and it's not running. That's actually a problem on my fault because I've been screwing around a few things. But it's going to work if I run it in debug mode. So again, essentially the same thing. So don't worry about it. So yeah. So now, I'm technically debugging the code, but I'm still executing it, so I'm just going to execute it line by line, so execute, execute, so it's assembled it, took one millisecond, execute, and there's the result. So it printed out 13, which is indeed a term of the Fibonacci sequence, not sure if it's the seventh term, it's definitely one of the terms, so... And I know this code works, so if, if it's not the seventh term that I've just commented this code wrong, what... Oh well. But yeah, there you go. And this isn't, this is definitely not the most basic C++ program out there, probably not the most exciting program either, but hey, it gets you an idea of how it works. I guess, I don't know. <laughs> Just wanted to show something off. But anyways, thank you. And in the next video, what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to get into some C++. We're going to be building very basic, nothing nearly as complicated as this. You, it won't look like this big giant cryptic nightmare at all, so don't worry. But yeah, it's going to be pretty simple, and we're going to get everything set up. So yeah, thank you, and I'll see you next time.